Racing returns beneath the twin spires. Turf racing does not. We'll have to wait for Keeneland for that here in the blue grass as the grass continues to grow at Churchill Downs. But plenty of great racing over the next three weeks and hoping to find some great picks is the Paddock Prince, David Levich, Kentucky Zone. David, we're back at Churchill Downs. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I actually, I actually don't mind all dirt racing. Um, I'm, I'm more of, I might be in the small percentage here, but I actually prefer dirt racing to turf racing for the most part. So I actually don't mind the all dirt meet. And there's 93 horses entered in eight races on Thursday. So I'm guessing the next three weeks at Churchill will be strong fields and good betting opportunities. Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I like turf racing, so I won't say I fully agree, but I will say, as a handicapper, it's very nice not having to worry about 16-horse turf fields, whether they're coming off the turf because rain's in the forecast and the AEs. Uh, they're great in the moment, potential for value, et cetera. But as someone who's done what you do, it's nice to know, not have to worry about surface changes and things like that. And uh, just from a preparation standpoint – we only have one surface to worry about at Churchill Downs, uh, but this meet, a lot of two-year-old racing, expected some Breeders' Cup implications and the start of the road to the Kentucky Derby in 2023. So already that time with the Iroquois. Yeah, the other thing is, too, Churchill's turf course obviously was so funky in the spring and the summer that it was kind of even hard to bet on. So until they get it right, hopefully in the um, fall meet, they run some races on the turf, but I'm glad we're just sticking to dirt at this point. Cause it was such a guessing game on the turf to begin with. But yeah, like you said, this weekend, they have some Oaks and Derby 10 point preps. So I think Damon's mound and echo again are running on in the boys race. Um, echo again was an, I think he had the highest buyer of any two year old at Saratoga. So yeah, the Damon's mound obviously won the Saratoga special. So that should be a good matchup. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, Michelle Lovell and Steve Asmus in round two. She already uh, defeated Golfport, uh, big favorite when winning the Saratoga Special. Now gets to take on this one in the Iroquois. Uh, one thing we talked about when discussing Belmont at the Big A was shippers. Uh, summer turns to fall and the racing does the same. Uh, a lot of uh, moving pieces, so to speak, moving horses anyway. And one thing that was really interesting to me looking at the Churchill Shipper Report is how well the Arlington starters have done the last five years. Now, no Arlington meet this year, no Arlington shippers unless they've been on a really long layoff. And I was curious, uh, does that mean we're going to see better numbers maybe from Colonial and Horseshoe Indianapolis, which is where I think most of the Arlington horses ended up, maybe a few at Presque Isle, uh, I guess some at Saratoga. But it seems like the, the horses who would have been winning from Arlington uh, may be more apt to be racing at Horseshoe Indianapolis and, and uh, Colonial than anywhere else. Their numbers were okay, so maybe they'll be better going forward. But what do you make of that Arlington number, and, and where do you think is the beneficiary of that this meet? Yeah, that number, I actually saw that too. That number was pretty high, and I don't know if that was turf or dirt related, to well, synthetic to dirt, but I don't know if most more of those were turf horses from Arlington Park. I think Colonial Downs is one track that's picking up more steam by each year, so they get more competitive horses by you know each year you had big time barns running and you know maiden races there on mondays and tuesdays so i think a lot of good horses it's kind of turning into the midwest um or i guess you'd call it the midwest track that can you know churchill people go to if they don't go to saratoga so i think their stock has improved a ton i saw on there saratoga does really well at churchill which i'm not surprised because a lot of the big time trainers take a lot of their good horses at saratoga and bring them back to churchill for you know, their regular meets. So, you know, I was a little surprised by Arlington, but I'm not going to be surprised if Colonial horses do really well. And then, you know, Indiana Grand, I feel like those are more starter horses that do well in claiming races, dropping in the realistic levels. And you might get some allowance horses, but I feel like Colonial Downs is the one track that's going to continue to get better every year. I saw they put in for more dates as well next year. Yeah, and uh, the, the two that were by far the worst, everywhere else was just kind of middle of the road. But Monmouth and Gulfstream, uh, pretty negative. Um, not a huge of st starters, admittedly, on the small side there. But uh, the ones that do come don't win. And I think that 
speaks to kind of what you mentioned with the circuit. Obviously, you have some horses stay in the Midwest. You have the better ones going to Saratoga. They come back. The Gulfstream and Monmouth, that you know, especially those running in the summer, don't really fit in the Kentucky program. Uh, so when they show up here, I'm guessing some of that's probably for stakes. But uh, worth noting uh, that the ones kind of shipping in from out of circuit have not done well uh, at the current meet. Uh, two-year-old racing, I mentioned being uh, a big thing. And uh, I looked at the trainers the last five years, and I only looked at dirt. So these do not include any turf starts uh, over the last five years because we're only going to be dealing with dirt. And uh, Ken McPeak, Brett Calhoun, and Rudy Brissett, and Joe Sharp, uh, huge, huge numbers. Uh, really, of those four, Kenny McPeak, the only one I think most people would kind of recollect is, oh, yeah, he trains a lot, a lot of two-year-olds that do well. Uh, and on the negative side of things, Steve Asmussen, Tom Amos, Mark uh, Mark Cassie has a, actually a positive ROI, but the impact is negative. So I'm guessing he had one big price. Uh, and Brad Cox, uh, really not all that great either. And those are big names that take money every race. Yeah, Kenny McPete, I don't know if it was the first day of the fall meet last year. It might have been September, but I feel like first week year olds going a mile and you know, two turns at big prices. I remember Larry won on like a twenty eight to one shot. So yeah, he, he trains his horses, I feel like, for the longer distance. He's not really a six and a half sprint guy. So when the distances start to increase, McPete gets better. And I'm not really surprised by Asmussen either. I feel like he really preps his two year olds for the early races at Churchill in the spring and then towards Saratoga. And then the ones that kind of not nearly not Wesley Ward, who really only is Keeneland in April and any after that is a kind of a shocker. But I feel like Asmussen really points his for the early summer and through the summer. And then, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some good ones he um, unveils, but I feel like he's more of an early summer guy. And then Brad Cox, I mean, you can't leave him out of two year old races. So every time you see him, you got to you got to take a peek a little bit. Right. Yeah. The issue with Brad is he's just over bet. I mean, he wins at 20.4 percent, a really solid number. Uh, the ROI isn't there, but, uh, you know, the, the ones that are well met certainly are winning, whereas a guy like Steve or Tom Amos uh, and, and Tom seemingly couldn't lose early yeah. summer with his two year olds. Uh, but come September, they are uh, Steve's 11 percent, Tom's nine and a half uh, with with negative numbers on the, the wagering side of things. So uh, just, you know, they're all individuals. And as you talked about in the, the Belmont at Aqueduct video, uh, you know, if, if the right one's working the right way, I certainly would not use a Tom Amos because of those numbers. But overall, definitely some cause for pause with the, the big names. Yeah, I think Tom Amos, didn't he win like nine two-year-old races or something crazy at Saratoga yeah. in the spring? And I mean, I think, he, I think he, I don't know if he had one at Saratoga for a two-year-old, but, you know, you do have to look at the, you know, if a horse has come from Saratoga and he came sixth in a baby race, you might want to actually take a look. He might have done look good on paper, but he might have run against, you know, Echo again or someone along those lines. So those field, those two-year-old right. races can be very deep no matter you know, what the horse looks like on paper compared, it could, you know, it depends who he's running against at Churchill, but going through the fields of those races is probably important at Churchill too, and baby races. Yeah, we all uh, saw your, your love for Irad uh, in, on display at the Saratoga meet, but now at Churchill, we don't get to uh, have, uh, I mean, we still have big names, but they split up. Some come here, some go there. And in Kentucky, as deep as I really do think this jockey colony is, it's incredible to me. <laughs> Tyler uh, is just head and shoulders the best of this group. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. He he gets put on a lot of live horses, but he wins at such a high clip at Churchill. For you know, it doesn't matter the distance. I feel like he's good at every distance, speed, closer. He's so strong. And, you know, Ricardo kind of fell out a little bit last year, but he's starting to pick up steam again. I saw he's riding all the Asmussen horses on Thursday and Friday. So I think he's he had a decent Saratoga. He had a good spring at Churchill. So I think Ricardo is outside of Gaffleon, probably the second best rider there. And, you know, he's starting to pick up his steam again. And but like you said, there's so many good riders. Your guy Julian's are obviously a very good rider. He had a great Saratoga, by the way. Then you have Brian Hernandez. Yeah. He had a lot of he is. He he had a big <laughs> Saratoga. I you know, I I saw an interview that he didn't know what to expect. I mean, went in ten races and you know, some good two year olds up there. I'm sure he enjoyed being up there and it was worth his say and it would have been 11 if they had uh kept him on more like goddess i don't want to talk about that i mean joe rosario's 
agree. That was that was just I don't know. I, don't, I, I this this is a number I want to run because I mean I I've seen Joel be in a zone unlike any other jockey where it's like man this guy is the best rider in the country, and then you see that and it seems with him it's streakier than most. It is streaky. I mean, at Kentucky Downs, I think he only has like four wins right now. He's like four for thirty-five or something. Oh, and he's been on live horses. I mean, he's not. Yeah, and he's there to ride for Larry Demerit. <laughs> Yeah, I, the, I mean, just like the ride on Jouster last weekend, that horse was 18 links back, like right out of the gate and comes flying. So I do think he goes, he's really in flows. You know, he everybody said war, he did win like 12 stakes races at Saratoga, which is incredible, or, you know, graded stakes, which is really good. But yeah. everybody's going to remember that war like God is right. I mean, <laughs> that was just, he was like, I guess he just thought he couldn't lose no matter what the pace was or what the trip was. And, when you leave Chad Brown and Irad on a lone lead going 58 for the half or whatever it was, it's going to be hard to run her down. Right now, what's your fair odds on flight line to win the Breeders' Cup? Um, If I was a fair – I would say even money because yeah. people got to remember he obviously – I mean, the race the other day, I mean, I was unbelievable. I was sitting there like this can't – he's got to stop at some point, and he just kept going. <laughs> But it's kind of like the Olympiad thing and life is good in the Whitney. When you chase a horse like life is good, it's a little different. I don't know what happened to Olympiad on that day, but Olympiad comes back in the Jockey Gold Cup, gets an easier trip, wins easy. When he has the chase, life is good. And he's obviously probably a little better than life is good. But when he has the chase him, pace will be different, you know, and then he's got to hold off like horses like Olympiad. I think it'll be a little different, but I wouldn't be surprised if he wins by 10 lengths either. So I think, but I think right. the scenario will be different. And it's at Keeneland, so uh, plenty of uh, discussion leading up to that. And uh, I've seen that you have your – is your Keeneland uh, subscription yeah, already available? Up. Yeah, it's up. I get it out a little early so because Keeneland's yeah. a big meet. Actually, Keeneland is – the Keeneland fall meet is my favorite meet of the year, actually. I really like the um, – outside of probably Saratoga, I like, I like going to the Keeneland fall meet too. Right. Well, that's because you go to those UK games after, right? No, I do not. I'm actually going to the UFL game tomorrow. I haven't been to a UFL football game in like three years, so or Friday, I mean, so right. But no, not a UK football guy. I heard they beat Florida last week. I didn't even know until somebody told me. Wow, that's that's impressive because I couldn't miss it, unfortunately. But uh, nah, they always blow it eventually. Yeah, you said it. Right, well. We don't want to, we're, we're alienating too many people, a lot of UK fans out there. Uh, so I'll stop short of saying go Big Blue, but happy you got the dub in Florida, uh, especially if that means you're rolling over those uh, sports wagering winnings into uh, a Paddock Prince subscription. That would be a, a good use for the funds. And uh, look forward to uh, all your picks at Churchill. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. you got Twilight Racing on Thursdays. I think there's a right. night racing the 24th, so – It'll be a fun – people got to remember, I think Nick's go won the Lucas um, Classic last year and ended up winning the Breeders' Cup. So, like mentioned in the Aqueduct video, there's going to be some really good horses. Obviously, this weekend you have the two-year-old races. We're going to be really good horses running, prepping for the Breeders' Cup. Love it. All right, well, stay tuned to Horse Racing Nation and our picks page for all of the Paddock Prince's thoughts. Mine as well, Sarah Albadwi, uh has a video with Caitlin Free, so be sure to check that out. Like and subscribe for all future videos. And we will uh, talk to you next week. We'll have a topic to go over, right, David? Looking forward to it. Talk about Hot some topic. All right. Take care, everybody.